I have a hypothesis. I like to put on a science hat every now and then and try to come up with some interesting stuff. So my team and I sat down and figured out why is it that you don't get as sore when you're on a keto diet? How come when you're eating low carb and high fat, you don't seem like you get that sore after a workout? You seem like you recover. Well, there's a lot of research that helps us understand why we don't have as much lactate, like why we don't have that immediate muscle burn. There's a lot of science supporting that, but nothing really helping us out when it comes down to uh, soreness. So let's go ahead and let's take a deep dive. Let's see what's actually going on there and see if we can make some sense of it. So I invite you to put your research nerd glasses on and get to work. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of videos throughout the week as well. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, then go ahead and hit that little bell icon to turn on your notifications so you never ever miss a beat. And if you like protein and you like meat, go ahead and check out Butcher Box down below in the link that's in the description. Okay, special discount for anyone that wants to take advantage of getting fresh, good quality grass-fed, grass-finished meat delivered right to their doorstep without ever having to set foot in a grocery store. So special link down below in the description. Make sure you check them out. Big thank you to them. All right, let's go ahead and let's get into this. I want to start this video off with two studies. All right, well, I guess that's four, but two studies. Okay, one's actually in mice and one's in humans. But the point is, it's going to help us get a well-rounded look at this. This first study I want to talk about was published in the journal Nutrients. Okay, this journal Nutrients study took a look at mice and it wanted to see what happened in terms of their overall lactate levels. Okay, lactate levels are the, uh, the level of a byproduct, like when you're exercising. You have lactic acid, that's lactate. Okay, so it divided mice into four groups. Okay, one group was a normal traditional diet that was sedentary. Then another group was a normal traditional diet that was active. Then another group was keto diet that was sedentary. And lastly, keto diet that was active. Okay, what they wanted to see was how this all compared. Well, they found that the keto diet that was active group ended up having quite a bit lower levels of lactate. They had a lower lactic acid buildup. That was pretty interesting, and this was shortly after a workout finish. They also found there was less lactate dehydrogenase, which is what plays a role in the breakdown of this lactic acid. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. We're seeing that the keto diet has an effect there in terms of just being able to buffer that, right? Now, another study that was published in the journal Cell Metabolism, this took a look at humans, took a look at endurance athletes. Now, these endurance athletes had them go on a nutritional ketogenic diet, so induced ketosis nutritionally. And they, again, wanted to look at what happened with their overall lactate levels. Well, they found that 30 minutes after a workout, their lactate levels were significantly lower when they were on a keto diet than if they weren't. So that's begging the question, okay, does this mean this is why we don't get sore as much when we're on a keto diet? Well, it could, but the fact is lactic acid and lactate isn't necessarily what contributes to muscle soreness. In fact, lactic acid is a good energy source. Lactic acid gets converted back into glucose. It gets back in, turns back into energy. So basically when we're working out and we feel that burn, that burn, that lactic acid gets converted through the Cori cycle into glucose to get burned again. It's a pretty cool recycling mechanism. It's the hydrogen that causes the problem, okay? It's the positive hydrogen ions that actually make us fatigue and cause the issue. They basically form a chemical resistance that we can't overcome. Now, this could play a part in soreness, okay? There's no solid link, but hydrogen could play a role in why we get sore. We just don't know. But I wanna take it one step further, okay? When we start looking at what is going on, we start looking at another study, we realize that lactate levels don't really go down till after a workout's done, a little bit later, right? So this study was published in the journal Metabolism. Took a look at two groups, okay? These were ultra marathon runners, good quality, like high power endurance athletes. They're just used to running long distances. Okay, one group did a traditional diet, one group did a keto diet. Now they had both groups on one day just work out to a maximum intensity. They had them run a lot and they determined what their peak oxygen consumption was. Then on day two, they had them run for three hours at 64% of their peak oxygen capacity. So they wanted them to just push it all the way. Well, what was interesting was what they found at the end of this. See, they wanted to measure overall lactate levels and things like that. They found that the keto group ended up having higher levels of lactate right after a workout, but then it dropped back down to a pretty normal baseline level relatively quick. Okay, so in fact, even lower levels at some degree. Now, additionally, they found that the glycogen levels ended up being the same in both groups. So glycogen is the stored form of carbohydrate, right? So the traditional diet group and the keto diet group ended up with the same amount of stored carbohydrates. 
What the heck is going on? How does that work? How does a group that doesn't consume carbohydrates end up with the same amount of stored carbohydrates at the end of a long workout? Well, it has to do with the keto diet and how it upregulates the process of the Cori cycle. So basically, if you start putting things together, it makes sense. The group that was on the keto diet produced a lot more lactate right after a workout. When measured right after the workout, they had more lactic acid. But because they were fat adapted, and because they're on the keto diet, their bodies were much more efficient at taking that lactate and turning it back into glucose. Basically, the body had no choice but to learn how to do that. So they worked out hard, they produced a lot of lactic acid, and they measured right after the workout and it was high, but 30 minutes later, it was lower, just like the other study showed, lower levels, right? It's because all that extra lactate went to the liver and the liver turned it into sugar and then the muscles soaked up the sugar. So that's exactly why the glycogen levels were the same between both groups. Because one group, the non-keto group, they just had carbs, right? That, that the carbs were able to restore glycogen just fine. But the keto group had to go through a different mechanism. So what this makes me hypothesize and really start to wonder is if it's not really reducing the lactate during a workout, it's more so reducing the hydrogen potentially. So maybe we're having less of that hydrogen, positive hydrogen ion that's making us fatigue and potentially making us sore. So because we see that lactate stays high when we're working out on keto, it just happens to drop really fast. The first two studies I referenced made it look like lactate goes lower, but the next study shows that lactate's higher and then just drops 30 minutes later. So my point in saying all of this is, it must be a unique way that we haven't discovered yet where the keto diet is preventing hydrogen from really causing the negative effect. Now, the other thing we have to look at is ammonia, okay? So if you've ever done a tough workout or a long run and you smell that ammonia-like smell, that's a pretty normal byproduct. Like if I go for a long run, I will come home and my wife like wants me out of the house because sometimes I will smell like ammonia, okay? That's usually a sign of protein breakdown. It's not always the best thing, but that ammonia can actually cross the blood-brain barrier and cause a central fatigue throughout your entire brain and also your central nervous system. So you just get kind of, you hit a mental wall. Well, the interesting thing is that the keto diet actually blunts this. We don't know how, but ammonia is not really a good thing to have a lot of in our body. The ketogenic diet seems to blunt it, and it could simply be because we're consuming less protein because we don't need it as much. The keto diet makes it so we don't need the protein. We have enough fat that's buffering muscle breakdown. So without the extra protein, we don't have that protein converting into ammonia, and that ammonia not really going into our brain, causing us to fatigue. But that's a story for a different day. Lastly, we have to look at how we actually think we get sore. The nerves in our bodies run through the connective tissue that connects muscle fibers. So if we have strands of muscle fiber, they're like this and this, we have connective tissue that's in between the two. Okay, nerves run through that connective tissue. So it's hypothesized, again, that muscle soreness or delayed onset muscle soreness comes from the breakdown of the connective tissue between the two where the nerves can actually feel the pain. Okay, so this is interesting. This leads me to believe that it has something to do with the inflammasome and NLRP3 and the relationship with inflammation in the ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet modulates inflammation, reduces inflammation through the NLRP3 pathway, which makes it so that we have less inflammation rubbing on the nerves in that connective tissue. Less inflammation means less pain. So that could be why we actually have less physical soreness, but the recovery and the metabolic process probably has something more to do with that whole lactate system. I know this is a complex video, but at least it breaks down a hypothesis, and I encourage you to jump in with me. Put down in the comment section below what you think of this, because it's pretty wild, and maybe we're onto something. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you in the next video.